the title and the theme that I want to bring forth, and I was just thinking about this uh, thought here already about um, uh, surrendering uh, to live to, uh, for me to live as Christ, and that, that thought had been continued to be on my heart, and but it didn't rhyme with. Well, 2021. And I wanted to do a theme. It doesn't really have to do a theme, but I wanted to do a theme. And, and so I was just looking at surrender. And this verse came up, and there it was, it really just plain as day. So we're just going to look at that, and, and hopefully it's a challenge to you. But this, this is the theme, um, Thy will be done in 2021. Thy will be done in 2021. And you know what? If, if all that gets accomplished this year is what God wants to get accomplished Think about that. If all that gets accomplished this year is just only what God wants to get accomplished, then it will be exactly, it will be a, there's nothing else that we could ask for. And we, uh, we, it may not be that we'll be on the, the evening news in Albuquerque, uh, this church on the reservation. It may not be that at all. Just if we can reach the people that God wants us to reach and just be exactly what He wants us to be and just, just pray and say, God, I want to do Your will. And so we're going to go ahead and look here to Luke chapter number 22, verse number 41. Luke chapter 22, verse number 41. Luke 22, verse number 41. And here's the account of Jesus as He was going to pray right before the crucifixion, right before He was going to go to the cross. And so verse number 41, Luke 22, 41, it says, and he, was, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed. And in verse number 40, um, 42 it says, Father, if Thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but Thine be done." Thine be done. Thy will be done in 2021. And it says, And there appeared an, an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, it was where great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. So there's a lot of different things that we can see here in this passage, and we'll look at a few of them, and then we'll just focus on that theme about His will being done. So let's go ahead and pray and ask Him uh, for His help here this evening. Father, Lord, I pray that You just bless our, our message, Your Word, Lord, and Lord, uh, truly, Lord, if we can just do Your will this year, everything that we do, we could, we could pray about it and say, Lord, show us what You want, and we could just do it, Lord. And Lord, just be tuned into You that we know Your will. Tune into Your Word that we may understand Your will. And Lord, just to do what You want us to do, Lord. Is, Lord, I pray it would be an incredible year for our church. Lord, You just allow us to do things together. And Lord, we just get excited about Your, your plan and Your things You have for us, Lord. And I pray that whatever hindrances that would, might be out there, Lord, that we could, um, we could see, um, we can just see the, the, the devil held back and, and, and all the uh, things that would try to stop those things from happening would be held back. And each person would be totally tuned into You and surrendered to You in every way. So Lord, I pray that You would just allow us to do that this year, Lord, and we can look back and make Maybe see um, some, some people sitting here, maybe at the start of next year, that could give a testimony and say, I got saved last year because somebody showed me the truth, or somebody lived the truth before me, or somebody loved me, loved on me, somebody pointed me to Christ, Lord. And so, Lord, I pray you just continue to bless uh, this coming year, Lord, give us your strength and your direction. And Lord, we don't know, maybe we're just a few days away, and you're going to be coming back. We don't know, Lord. And so, Lord, I pray you just help us, Lord, as we serve you and we follow you. But above all, Lord, uh, my prayer is that um, thy will be done, Lord, this year. We love you, Lord. Thank you so much for loving us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. I just want to look at a couple really quick thoughts here as I was reading this passage. And verse number 40 says, But when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And so this was before they even started praying. And what did he tell his disciples? Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And then, of course, we see that um, when he came back, in verse number 45, when he rose up from prayer and he was come to his disciples and he found them sleeping. For sorrow. And he said unto them again, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. So we see some principles here. Uh, one, he'd asked them to pray, and what did they do instead? <laughs> they slept. They slept. And so, um, so but it, the, the principle we see as well is that when we don't pray, and we don't spend time with him, we don't, we don't tune into him, we're going to be tempted much more to do what's wrong. We're going to be tempted much more to do the wrong things or, or do things that are not according to his will. And so that's why it's important, just as we heard already today, that we get into God's word this year, that we get into God's word in prayer. And I want to challenge each person to, if you're not uh, spending that time with family or spending that time in God's word, to make this year that time that you say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And so maybe you say, well, I didn't, maybe I did, did okay last year, or maybe I didn't do so well last year. It doesn't matter. Matter. What matters is not how much you read, and I think that's important too because if you need a schedule, but 
are you meditating on God's Word each day? Maybe it's just one verse, or maybe it's a passage, or maybe it's a chapter, whatever you feel like you want to do. But meditate upon God's Word and spend time with Him each day. And so that's, that's just a challenge for us here going into the new year. But it says here, um, verse, number, uh, uh, verse number 43, it's, it, well, let's look at verse number 42 again. It says, Father, if Thou be willing, remove this cup from me. So Jesus, is, he, knew, he knows what's coming. And, and, it's, and it's going to be very, very hard. And the, there, of course, there is the physical part. He will actually take that, um, that, that cross for us. He will actually take that cat of nine tails. His back will be ripped and, 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 and shredded. And all the things he will go through, that's the physical side. But there's also the spiritual side as well, when his own father would pour out his wrath upon sin and turn his back upon his own son. And so all these things he's facing, and he says, um, he says, remove this cup from me. But he says, most importantly, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Is there some times in our life when we would say, Lord, I would really like you to take away this cup. I don't want to go through this cup. I don't want to have this cup in my life anymore. Lord, I do not want this anymore. But I think there are correct uh, thing to say, our correct heart motive, our correct heart desire should be this, not my will, but thine be done. And what I like when he prayed that, as soon as we see that he prayed that prayer, right after that it says, and there appeared an angel un from him from heaven and strengthened him. He says, Lord, he says, he says thy will be done. Thy will be done. This is, this is a very tough thing that I'm going to be doing. And what did it say right after that? An angel appeared to strengthen him. You know, when we, we turn it over to God, He's going to give us strength that we need to go through it. He's going to give us strength to do whatever it might be His will for us to have in our life. And then it says, And being in agony, He prayed more earnestly, and His sweat was it were great drops of blood falling down onto the ground. And for someone to, to um, say, how should I pray, Brother Russell? Should I really just, should I really just pray with intensity and fervency? And, and, and I mean, it's going to be tough and hard. I mean, should our, is it really that big a deal to, to labor in prayer? That's what Jesus did. He, he, he sweat, as it were, great drops of blood. He prayed more earnestly. And so that's an example for us to pray more earnestly. And so we see um, these things here I just wanted to point out um, real quickly. But I want to just jump into our message here that um, the, the main focus here tonight, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Let's go over now to Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 10. Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 10. And so this is the Lord's Prayer, and many of you could quote this by memory, and you can, you can say it with me if you like. We're just going to read that uh, very first verse here in, or the first verse 9 and 10, Matthew chapter 6, verse number 9 and 10. It says, After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I don't know if you've thought about that, that phrase there very much, but what it's showing us there is in heaven everything that God's will is gets done. Everything that God's will is get done. And so he says here we should pray that everything on earth gets done the same way as it does in heaven already. And so does man have a choice on what he does? Absolutely He does. We can see that so clearly in God's Word. And so we can choose to do God's will, or we can choose not to do God's will. We can see, we can see that uh, very, uh, very uh, clear from God's Word. We, um, we don't have to do God's will. We can see examples in the Bible. We can see the example of Jonah, right? And the Word of the Lord came to Jonah, the, uh, the Mittite, and says, um, he says to go and, and cry unto those people in Nineveh, and go out and tell them, tell them to repent, because judgment is coming. And did Nineveh take off towards Nineveh and do God's will? He went the opposite direction instead. And so, um, so we see here that um, it says, Thy will be done in earth. And that's, that's our, that should be our, our heart's desire right there, that God's will would be done through us and in us. And so, um, so we see here, of course, I, when it comes back to Jonah, I don't want to go this, I think it would have been better for him if he would have went for the first time, right? And we, we all look at it now and say, but Brother Russell, that was a really good story in the Bible. We really like that story. But you know, uh, he, would, he could have skipped out on, 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 a, on a really, really tough time. And we see, of course, that um, he did uh, obey God and, and actually did do his will. And we saw the, see the results of that. And so, let's look at a couple points here um, this evening. I want to look at um, things about doing God's will. So, first of all, we're going to look um, at, at a Revelation, uh, Romans chapter number 12, verse number 1. Romans chapter number 12. Verse number one. And so the first thing that we, he wants us to do is totally surrender ourselves to him. Totally surrender ourselves to him. And so Romans chapter number 12, verse number one. 
And this is His will. More than anything else, He wants us. And so, Romans chapter 12, verse number 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren. This is written to Christians, and He said, I ask you, or I, I beg you, I, um, I, I um, implore you. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, because God has added mercy upon you, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy Acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And so, what, is we, what do we see that I believe that his, one of his number one things he wants from us, first of all, is he wants us to surrender ourselves totally, completely to him. Totally, completely to him. Every part of us. Say, so God, all of me, I surrender to you. Every part. And that is his will. And how do we know that? Because we can see that in the next verse. And be not conformed to this world, and that is his will as well, but be ye transformed and renewed. Um, of, and by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So if you don't present your body as a living sacrifice, you're not going to be proving and, 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 and finding and, and doing His will that He has for us. So the very first thing to do His will is to surrender our will. Does that make sense? And that, that's not what we normally want to do. That's not what we normally want to do. So it's total surrender. And we can also see that in other places as well. 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. So if you're there in Romans, turn over and the Corinthians will be to the right. 2 Corinthians chapter number 8 and verse number 5. 2 Corinthians chapter number 8 and verse number 5. And these are the brethren that were there at Macedonia in verse number 5. And it says, And this they did not as we hoped, because they were wanting to receive assistance for the other churches that were in need in Jerusalem. And it says, And this they did not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord. You see that? And what's the next part? And unto us, they gave their self unto the Lord and to unto us, why? By the will of God. And it was, so they basically said, God, first of all, we're going to give ourself 100% holding nothing back. Uh, it's not about me, it's about you. I want to give you every part of my life in every way that I can. And so, um, so that is the first thing that we must do and if we're going to see him, see his will done in 2021, is God, you got me. All of me. All of my uh, ambitions, all of my uh, desires, all of my money, all of my family, all of my, uh, every part of me, all, everything is all yours. And just give him a, a blank check, sign, and say, here's my life, God, take it. And do all you want to with me this year. So that's the first thing we'll need to do is that. And so I just want to give an illustration, and, um, and I just want to share this. Uh, this is an illustration that, about F.B. Meyer. You may have heard of him, you may have not. If, uh, on my Bible program there at my house in the commentary section, is, there's a commentary actually on F.B. Meyer. He, he was born in 1847, and he died in 1929. He was a famous pastor and evangelist in England. And was a frequent speaker at Kinswick and a friend of Hudson Taylor, D.L. Moody, and Charles Spurgeon. He was loved for his many writings and devotions and scriptural, scriptural biographies, which helped countless thousands grow in their love for his word. Even today, if you look very, you won't have to look very far at all, and you'll start finding tons and tons of books that he wrote that have been a great help to people. And so, anyways, I just wanted to share um, his testimony that he gave. And so, we're going to look at that here. As a young man with a thriving reputation, he went to a farewell meeting for a number of graduates of Cambridge University who were going out to China. These young men were called the Cambridge Seven. One of them was a young man named Charlie Studd, and we also know him as C.T. Studd, the most famous sportsman in England, for the captain of the English cricket team, always considered the foremost sportsman in the land. So he was the captain of the cricket team. That would be like uh, being the, the star player for the Bulls or something like that in, in America. He was, he was a sportsman. He was famous. Everybody knew who he was. He was very uh, talented. But it says, now he was turning his back upon the world of sports to go to China with a China inland mission. So he turned his back on the money. He turned his back on the fame. He turned his back on the career he had because God told him, I want you to go to China, and I want you to reach those Chinese people with the gospel. And so um, that afternoon, as um, as as C.T. Studd was C.T. Studd was giving his testimony, F.B. Meyer listened intently. It was not so much what F.B. Meyer heard, but what he saw and felt. For it was obvious that C.T. Studd was a man totally yielded to Jesus Christ. A statement that C.T. Studd once made perhaps sums up the whole man: If Jesus Christ be God and died for me. 
that no sacrifice can be too great for me to make for him. And so that's a, one of uh, C.T. Studd's famous uh, quotes that he made, and a lot of people will know that. After the meeting, F.B. Meyer went to Charlie Studd and said, It is quite obvious that you have something that I lack, something that I need. What is it? C.T. Studd, in a very forthright, forthright manner, looked him straight in the eye and asked, Have you ever surrendered everything to Jesus Christ? F.B. Meyer thought a moment and said, Yes, I have. But a small voice within said, No, you have not. Deeply troubled, he made his way home, hurried to his bedroom, fell to his knees, and began to pray. He tells us that when he was praying, it seemed as if the Lord came to him and said, Meyer, I want all the keys to your heart. Meyer began to argue a little with the Lord, All the keys? Yes, Meyer, I want all the keys. Then Epi Meyer deceitfully took a ring of keys and handed them over to the Lord. But you cannot fool the Lord. There was one missing. The Lord, it seemed, Epi Meyer tells us, took that ring of keys and began to count them carefully. When he had finished, the Lord looked at him and said, There is one key missing. And if I am not Lord of all, I am not Lord at all. Then he turned as if he were to leave the room. In his dilemma, Epi Meyer cried out to him, Lord, don't leave. We are, why are you leaving? Back came the word, If I am not Lord of all, I am not Lord at all. But Lord, it's just a very small key, a very small place in my heart. Back again came the word, If, it, if I am not Lord of all, I am not Lord at all. In desperation, Epi Meyer surrendered that last key. And what happened? He became a spirit controlled man who was, it was a blessing to countless multitudes. Even today, his books speak in many languages. That was the crisis of his life. He had to build an altar and had to place F.B. Meyer upon that altar. Every key had to be surrendered. And so I want to say, maybe in our life here today, maybe in your life, maybe there's a key to your heart that you're still hanging on to. Maybe there's an area in your life you say, I'm, I'm surrendered to him. And even today, maybe you say, I'm surrendered to him, but maybe there's a still small voice of the Holy Spirit saying, But what about this area? What about this area? Have you surrendered all to Him? Is there anything you're holding back? God knows. God knows if I'm holding something back. God knows as well. And so, and so the first thing we must do to truly do His will is give Him everything. Surrender all. And 100%. And so the uh, so first thing I want to say here is that um, to, be, is, is to, do, to, be, to do His will in 2021, we need a total surrender. Total surrender. Surrender. Then the last thing I want to look here, when it comes to God's will, and I see this clearly in God's word, is that He wants souls to be saved. Souls to be saved. And we got a chance to hear the testimony of Miss Dorothy and a, and a wonderful thing of her son getting saved this last year. And um, God tells His people, commands His people to share Christ with others. That's His command. And when a church makes that number one, first God, first loving Him. And then sharing Christ with others, God is going to, God is going to bless that because that's the closest thing that, that's the, to His heart. And so, um, for for all souls to be saved, so that's God's will. Let's look at a couple of verses that show us that, and we're going to finish up here this evening. Let's look over in Second Peter, chapter number three, verse number nine. Second Peter, chapter number three, verse number nine. And there's some people that would say, um, "Where is the promise of His coming? Where has Jesus? He said He was going to come back. Why has He not come back?" And that is the question in this chapter here, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 9. And this is why he has not come back yet. In verse number 9 it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so, um, so why has he not returned yet? Well, first of all, he knew there was a you, and he loved you. And he knew that you were going to get saved. And he, was, and he allowed you to get saved. And by the way, he was long suffering to you to give you a chance, maybe more one, maybe more, than, more chances than one to get saved. Why? Because he is long suffering to us, word. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants everybody to be saved. So, what is the will of God? It is for each person to come to know him as their Savior. We can see that in a couple more passages we're going to look at here. So, John chapter number six. John chapter number six. Verse number 38. John chapter number 6, verse number 38. You may say, well, what, what is God's will when it comes to people getting saved? And so we can see it here in John chapter 6, and we're going to start in verse number 38. John chapter 6, verse number 38. He says, For I came down from heaven, this is Jesus, and here once again we see what, what was his desire, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Now there we go again. What, do we, what does he want us to do? Not my will, 
but the will of Him that sent me. And then verse number 39, This is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all which He hath given me I should lose nothing, but I should raise it up again at the last day. And so this is eternal security. When you get saved, we see that He is the one that's going to be holding you secure. And on that last day, He will raise you up again on that resurrection day. And then in verse number 41, And the Jews murmured at Him, because He said, I am the bread which comes down from heaven. And this, look at here in, in um, oh, verse number 42, I'm, or verse number 40, I'm sorry. And it says, And this is the will of Him that sent Me, that everyone which seeth the Son, and believeth on Him, may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up on that last, the last day. So, what is God's will? That every single person that sees the Son, Jesus Christ, and looks to Him, and by the way, he's, if He's lifted up, He'll draw all men unto Him, and believeth on Him, may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So, God's will is for who to be saved? Every person. Every person. And that's His will. Let's look now at one last passage, and we're going to be finished. Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 21. Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 21. So, what is the will of God? That every single person look upon the Son and believe upon Him and be saved, have everlasting life. So, in light of that um, passage, just look at, look at this, this, this passage. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 21. Here it says, Not every man that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So, who's going to enter into heaven? Those that do the Father's will. And what's the Father's will? That every single person see His Son and believe upon His Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. That's His will. So he said, Many will say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in Thy name? And in Thy name, and in thy name cast out devils? And in Thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me ye that work iniquity. And this verse right here I believe is so important because there's going to be some that will say, um, you know, I'm a good person. And you know, I, I've, I've given money to the church and I, I have, and it even mentioned some things here. I've even cast out devils. I've done, I've done some mighty works for you, Jesus. I've done some good things and so that I should go to heaven. I should go to heaven because I've done some really good things. I'm a good person. And he said, that's not the will of the Father just to do good things. He says, you must believe upon Jesus Christ. You must look upon His Son and believe upon Jesus and accept Him as your personal Savior. As your personal Savior. So, that's not what's going to get you into heaven. And I don't know what's going to happen in 2021. Jesus may very well come back. And if you're here and you have only just said, can say, I've been a good person, and you've never believed upon Jesus Christ as your Savior, you never accepted Him, then if the rapture takes place, those who are His children will be gone. And you will be left behind. And so I don't know when that's going to take place, but we can see that he said, um, but, but I've done some good things, Brother Russell. I, I've, I've done some really good things. I'm a really, I think I'm a really good person. Now, the Bible shows us that we're all sinners. And what's the most important thing is, do you know him as your Savior? Look in verse number 23. It says, Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And so he's making it very clear here. What's his will? It says, those that do the will of the Father, those are the ones that are going to heaven. What's His will? That you get saved. If you're not. If you are, man, praise the Lord. But if you're not saved, He wants you to get saved. Well, Brother Russ, I'm really, I think I've done a lot of good things. No, good things don't get us to heaven. Believing upon Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's what gets us there. And so, He makes it very clear. Do you know Him? Are you part of His family? Do you know Him personally? And so, if not, then you're not going to be there. Because He says, um, he says I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. So, what is His will? I believe the greatest thing that He wants is for every single person to be with Him in heaven. For every single person to have their sins forgiven. For every single one to be part of His family. And for every single one to have accepted His Son, Jesus Christ. So, I just want to end with that here as we look at um, 2021. Um, that will be done in 2021. I think we need to have total surrender. Total surrender. Holding nothing back. And then number two, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, His will for you is to come to know Him. His will for you is to come to know Him. Maybe you know somebody else that needs to be saved. He wants us to share in 2021. So let's go ahead with that and we will be dismissed here this evening. Father, Lord, I thank You so much for this opportunity to bring Your Word, Lord. And Lord, may we, may we truly uh, do Your will. Lord, I, I, I think each one of us need to look to Your Word and see those things that are obvious. There are some things that are just a command. 
And we just need to say, Lord, I, wanted, I, wanted, I just want to obey you. Lord, I, I, I can't do it in my own strength. I'm going to have to have your help. And we just tune into you and say, it's not my will, but thine be done. Lord, not my will, but thine be done. If all we accomplish in our family this year is just what you want done, your will, if all, if all we accomplish in our church is just your will this year, then that's the only thing that matters. So, Lord, I pray you continue to bless our church, bless our families, strengthen us together in, a, in, a, in an even a closer way, a, in a greater way, Lord, as we reach out to, the, to our community with you, that other people may know you. We love you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.